Hi everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. I'll be teaching you how to make double twist with bow turban. Actually, for this particular tutorial, I'll be teaching you with Ankara fabric as is shown in this picture. So stay tuned. So first of all, we'll be measuring an our half inch foam and this measures 23 inches length by 5 inches width 23 inches length by 5 inches width please this half inch foam is optional it's not compulsory another material we cut out is for the base and this measures 26 inches length by 20 inches width if you fold the material you will get 10 inches the width part if you fold it you get 10 inches but if you don't fold it you'll be getting 20 inches width then if you are using a poly material or a stretchy material your length will be 24 inches while the width will be 20 inches the next material we're cutting out is for the v face which measures 16 inches length by 5 inches width 16 inches length by 5 inches width you have to cut it out four pieces another material we're cutting out is for the handle and the length measures 13 inches by 5 inches width 13 inches by 5 inches width you cut out this material two pieces for tying the back then for poly or stretchy fabric don't cut out any handle for it. It's not needed. This piece is for the handle. And what I'm doing now is I'm trying to shape the edge of the handle. So what you do is you lay the, the pieces over each other. Take your scissors and slant your hand. Then you slash the edge of it. So to give it a sharp look. You can see how it is. So this is for the handle. So pick up the material that measures 26 inches length by 20 inches width. We turn it out, making the wrong side to face us. Please, you sew this edge and the other edge. You take it to your same machine and sew. Also, you pick up those pieces that are four. The one that measures 15 by 5. What you do is you sew this edge don't forget to sew the wrong side you sew this edge and you sew down please leave this point open sew this edge and this side do same for these three and for poly or stretchy material there's no need doing this process and you pick up the handle and do same for it you sew and leave this place open you sew and sew down leave this point open do it for the other piece okay i'm done sewing and this outcome so i'll use my scissors to trim the edge of this base you trim it off then you turn out the fabric after turning out you take that half inch foam and insert it inside these pieces you take your half inch foam i'll show you how the half inch foam we placed inside you make sure that there is space both down and up then these two sides will be equal the two sides will be equal you can see that so you take it and place inside the material don't forget to adjust there must be allowance up and down side by side So with the help of your pin, use it to hold down the foam to the material. The reason for this is why sewing on your sewing machine, the foam will not move. So it will stand very firm while sewing. So you sew, you take it to your sewing machine and sew down 
and sew. So you'll be sewing two lines. And this is the outcome of what I just finished sewing. Alright, for these other pieces, you take up the ones that are four pieces. That is 15 inches by 5. Take your scissors to notch the edges and you turn it out. Please, whatever you are doing to this piece, do it to the remaining three pieces. Also do the same for the handle. You notch the edge, then use your scissors to pull out the edges and you turn it out. So this is the outcome of it. I'm done turning all out. So you pick up the handle, remember there are two pieces, and fold that edge. Fold it in, just take a little piece like quarter inch and fold in. You see, you do the same for the other handle. So the next step is to start forming the V face. So first of all, you're going to take two pieces and cross over each other. Please watch whatever I'm doing here so you'll be able to get it. Remember the base here after sewing, the remnant will be 24 and a half. That is 24.5. Then what you will do is you divide 24.5. Take your tape rule, your measuring tape, and fold it. You get half of it. That will be 12.25. So each fabric, you are going to measure out 12.25 and mark it down with your shock. The reason why you are doing this is to make sure that this V face aligns with the back which is the base. Alright, so after marking those spots, you are going to, please, the, the part that has opening will be in the middle, that's where you trim off. Then that seam part, that edge is you, will be at the end. I don't know if you get me. So you take your pin and hold it. This part I'm holding is the part that is open, where you used in turning your material up. So you take it to your sewing machine and you sew. Before you sew, first of all, you fold this material and make sure that it is equal. Once it's equal, you go to your sewing machine and sew. You sew this part. All right, I'm done sewing. I can see the outcome. The next step to take is to take the other piece and place on the other side of it you are forming a zigzag face so you place it here use a pin to guide to guide it so it won't move while sewing when you place this material on top of the other one please don't make it align with the other one there will be gap on top there will be space on top all right watch closely and see how it is you can see that space right the next is to place the remaining material which is the fourth piece do same thing you did on the other side don't forget to give space while placing you take it to your sewing machine and see i'm done doing that see the back and this the front so once you are done you take your scissors and trim out the excess so what i'll be doing now is to locate the center of this v face you fold it, then you use your scissors to notch the center. When you're done with this, you pick up that base, also fold it. After folding, you use your scissors to notch the center as well. Alright, what you begin next is to Tack the base to the V face. Those parts you notched, you make both to align to each other. Use your pin to hold it down. Then you're going to use your pin to also hold the V face and the back. You can see they're equal, right? You do the same thing there. And you sew. You sew. You go to your sewing machine and sew down. Alright, I'm done doing mine. You can see the outcome. Then for the back, you can use your scissors to trim out any excess you see there. What you'll be doing next is to fold the material. Make the wrong side to face you. So you fold the material and don't forget to make it equal. 
can use your pin as a guide to hold it down. So you pick up your scissors and form a curve at the back of the canvas. You take it to your sewing machine and sew down. Start from this edge and sew down. You can check it out. I'm done sewing mine. This is the back. I can see how it looks. So remove the pins and you turn out the material. Next thing you will do is to attach the handle to it. So, what you do is take your measuring tape and mark two inches before attaching the handle. Mark two inches before attaching the handle. Please watch the way I place my handle. You do same for the other side. Use your pin to guide it before going to your sewing machine. When you get your sewing machine, you sew this way, the way I'm showing you. Alright, I'm done. You can see the way I did it. You can see the both handles that have been sewn. Alright, you turn out your cap base. Use your lighter to hem the edges. The reason why you're doing this is to give it a good finishing at the edge of that material. You take your needle and thread and run your do your running stitch at the back. While doing your running stitch, you stop where I stopped. Don't pull your needle to the band. Do you get that? Just sew from here to where I stopped to this place. Get it? Don't take it up up. Just stop where I stopped. Then you pass your needle back. And you drag. Once you're done doing this, you tie your knot and turn out your cap base. So I'm done with the cap base. You can see how it looks. I'll set this aside. Please. All the steps taken from this point do same for your pulley material or stretching material. We'll be cutting out another piece and this piece measures 36 inches length by 3.5 inches width. 36 inches length by 3.5 inches width. You cut it out into two. And the longer fabric for the twist measures 42 inches length by 3.5 inches width. You also cut it out in two pieces. So the next thing you'll be doing is to sew. Make the wrong side to face you. That is, when you take it to your sewing machine, you sew this part, the back side. Do same for the whole material. Alright, I'm done sewing and I've turned it out with my safety pin. This white thing is called fiber. So I'll be using fiber to fill up this fabric. I will fill the four pieces. The one that measures 36 inches and the one that measures 42 inches. So you fill up your fiber the way I'm doing. I'm done with mine. You can see the way it's looking. So you take 42 inches and align it with 42 inches. Then take it to your sewing machine and sew. 36 inches to 36 inches. You align it together and sew. I'm done doing that. So next thing you'll be doing is to form your twist. You can with the help of someone or you do it on your own. You twist the way I'm doing. So you continue to twist down. You do this throughout for the 
for the whole pieces. You can see the shorter one and the longer one, right? Okay, next thing we'll be doing is to place the shorter twist under and the long one on top. You get your cap base and place the, the, the shorter twist, that is the 36 inches one, under. Please, this is best done on your dummy head. You can do this on your dummy head. I placed mine on, the, on my dummy head. I used long needle to hold it down. I don't know if you get me. So I'm going to my dummy to do it. If you watch closely, you see pins. You can see it. I use pin to hold the twist down to the cabbies. I have not tacked. I just use my needle to hold it down. Next thing you'll be doing is to use a needle and thread to tack the back of the twist together. See what I'm doing? I'm not tacking into the cap base. I'm just tacking the twist to each other. I do the same thing here to this side. What you are doing on this end, do it on the other end. Once you finish tacking the two ends, don't forget to join both ends together. You hold, fold, watch closely. You see that have held the two edges together. So the next material you'll be cutting out measures six point five inches length by seven inches width. This fabric will be used to cover up that part you see at the end of the twist. You take it to your sewing machine. You sew down. Then you turn out. After turning it out, you use it to cover up that part. Watch closely the way I'm doing the covering. You made the soup, the soup part to be in the middle. Please don't remove your needle. If you watch closely, you see that I've not removed my needle. So my needles are still there. So you take, you hold it the way I'm doing now and you sew down. I'm done sewing. So you use the scissors to cut out the excess. And turn out the fabric. Once you are done turning out the fabric at the back, you adjust it very well. You can use your needle and thread to hold that loop, the material used in covering that place. You can use your needle and thread to hold it down to the twist, or you use your candle gum and do the way I'm doing. So your candle gum, you plug it in, you press down the candle, then hold the edges round to that twist. Alright, I'm true. So you take the twist and place on your cap base. Make sure that the back aligns with the some part at the back. Also, you will notice that I've not removed my pin. You can see that I've not removed my pin. That's still intact. Those pins are holding the twist together. So what I will do next is to use my needle and thread to tack the twist to the cap base just as I'm doing. Please do this round. You tack, then you cut out your needle and thread. Go to the other place you placed your pin. You tack and cut out. That's how you continue to do it. Till you find out that the, the twist is already tacked down to the cap base. Once you are done with that, you tie your knot, cut out it with your scissors, remove all the pins. Okay, see how it looks. I've tacked everything down, but at the back, there's a difference there. Watch closely. You see that I didn't tack this place down to the cap base. The reason is because if you do that, you won't be able to tie the back of your cap base. So what I'll be doing is just to use my needle and thread and hold those twists together. But don't hold it to your cap base. Tack the way I'm doing.
the last material we'll be cutting out is for the bow and it measures 12 inches length by 7 inches width 12 inches length by 7 inches width the wording that will be inside that will make it to stand firm this measures 7 inches length by 6 inches width 7 inches length by 6 inches width and the loop for covering the bow measures 6 inches length by 3 inches width 6 inches length by 3 inches width take it to your sewing machine and sew down then for the bow you fold this way you take the wording or the breast pad place on top of it use your pin to hold down then take to your sewing machine and sew round you sew it round this way i'm done sewing so what you do is to turn out the pieces so i'm turning out the loop once you're done with that you also turn out the bow just the way i'm doing when you locate the center please be careful so you don't cut the material the back of it so you cut out the way i'm doing using your scissors you turn out also when you're done turning out you can use your scissors or any sharp object to bring out the edges you use it to pop out the edges so it will look very neat All right, what I'll be doing now is to form my bow. Please follow this method. All right, you can see the way I did that. You can replay to watch the way I formed this bow. Then use your needle and thread to tack use it to hold it down once you're done holding down you tie with your needle and thread but don't cut out the thread after tying it you pick up your loop this is what you use to cover that center. You can use this trimming or any design of your choice to beautify it more. So I'm trying to cut out the trimmings to the size of the loop. Once you're done with that, you can take your sewing machine and sew it down. But I'll be using my candle gum to gum it to the loop. But I'm done with that. So I'll wrap it around the bow. You can see how it looks. I'll take it to my sewing machine and sew it down. I'm done doing that and I cut out the excess. With the help of that needle that I didn't cut out, I will use the needle to tack this bow to the cap base. You can place your cap base to the dummy head so you'll be able to get the best position to do your tacking. And this is the finished look. Thanks so much for your time. Hope you enjoyed the training. Thank you.